students welcome khushamdeed and khushgaldanis today we are going to discuss modern poetry means the modernist english poetry i am going to discuss with you the primary features and characteristics of modern english poetry as well as i'll try my best to highlight the important literary figures means uh, specifically the important uh, poets of the time period and the uh, important works so let's start our discussion modern age is basically started on the closing years uh, or in the closing years of uh, 19th century specifically the time period after the uh, time period of queen victoria is considered the modernist age the representative poets over uh, this time period are t s eliot in ezra pound uh, however there are a lot of uh, representative and prominent uh, poets of the time period but the representatives of the modern uh, poetry or the modernist poetry are uh, t s eliot and ezra pound modernist poets in their uh, way of writing poetry uh are totally different from the their predecessors and uh, in other words we can say they followed a totally new direction which was different from uh the previous ages like the romantic ages and the renaissance ages just like other ages modernists have set their own paradigms of uh, poetic conventions or poetic traditions they are highly innovative in their writings of poetry in terms of form as well as in terms of themes let's talk about the form first modernist poets are extremely innovative in terms of their use of language and their use of devices well how they are uh, innovative let's discuss that they are extremely dynamic and innovative poets regarding um their subject matter means the themes of their poetry then the their treatment with their themes of poetry then um their modes of writing and uh, the the technical due to the technical features of their poetry they have their own ways of using uh, the rhyming schemes and meters they normally uh, they used to write in free verses and then an imp- other important uh, technical feature of their writing is their use of intertextuality the feature of intertextuality in their poetry and the next thing is they used to uh, borrow the expressions from other languages yes that is a very uh, unique thing in uh, the rom- sorry in the modernist poetry that the modernist poets they uh, are very uh, familiar with with the taking or borrowing the expressions from other languages like even uh, in from greek and from roman languages they have taken their expressions and they have successfully used it in their poetry and those uh, borrowed expressions of uh, other languages in modernist poetry they have just highlighted the effects of the poetry they have just uh, we can say they have created a hype in 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 communicating the themes of modernist poetry when we talk about uh, the modernist inspiration from their predecessor then we uh, have come to know that they are totally against the romantic and victorian poetic traditions however they have uh, borrowed some technical features from their poetries from the poetries of uh, poetry of their predecessors but they have used them in their own way they do not cherish the religious values as much in their poetry that much in their poetry rather it it feels or it sounds like they have lost their faith in religion and in the religious values then uh, another thing in terms of meter they 
we we can find that they have discarded the meters they do not focus on the accuracy of rhyming schemes and meters in their poetry and we can find the intermingling of varying ideas in their poetry and uh, that's why they used to write in free verses and another feature that is thematic as well as uh, technical is that they they used to write uh, in ironies and in satire their the sound of their poetry is mostly ironic and uh, satiric then they excessively use uh, metaphors in their poetry and that's why it is uh, said that the modernist poetry and the modernist poets they are highly experimental in their nature and this very experimentation of modernist is considered uh, or is found in the form of uh, their use of different techniques of imagism symbolism impressionism and expressionism in poetry these uh, movements basically belong to the uh, art and painting but uh, some modernist english poets have successfully utilized them in their poetry and they have just uh, uh, beautified the effects of the these movements uh, while they they have just used them in poetry so uh, we that's why we can find images symbolist impressionist poets in english poetry uh, particularly in the modernist english poetry because these are all the modernist movements and these movements are the blessings of avant-garde movement modernist poets they use unconventional sources of poetic inspirations they have multiple themes in one poem and they have no single meaning at all rather normally they leave uh, the understanding of meanings on uh, the reader let's talk about the thematic properties of uh, modernist english poetry so modernist english poetry is mostly intellectual and sophisticated due to the uh, writings of some intellectual poets like uh, t.s eliot and w b yeats in the terms of themes we can find uh, some particular themes that are uh, specific to the modernist english poetry and these themes are Uh, first of all the theme of alienation in modernist poetry we find uh, the the poets writing on the alienation or the alienatory effects of uh, uh, the lives of modern man or in the lives of modern man so alienation is the prominent theme of uh, modernist poetry the second thing is fragmentation modern poems often sound like a series of broken images and expressions so this fragmentation is the second important thematic feature as well as a technical feature of uh, modernist poetry it is written from mind more than heart because in modernist poetry or in modern poetry we can find uh, modernist poets writings on uh, the topics which are normally considered taboos like uh, they used to write uh, on uh, the topics of drug prostitution crime and uh, they in short we can say that they uh, write on the ugliness and the beauty of life uh, in parallel The next thing is that they are extremely pessimistic due to the decay of values due to the hypocrisy of the society and secondly uh, the all these things the alienation fragmentation and pessimism are the results of world wars that are depicted in the poetry as well as the whole lot of the modernist literature so these uh, things alienation fragmentation and pessimism is not uh, are not uh, specific to the modernist poetry but we can find the these themes uh, uh, in the whole lot of modernist literature including poetry somehow uh, the echo of the modernist poetry is cosmopolitan because the issues which are addressed by 
modernist poetry they are not only the issues of the english society of the time rather the they they used to write on the issues which were uh, the issues of whole humanity like if we talk about the world wars the world wars did not only affect the uh, european countries but uh, they had a drastic effect on uh, the whole world so uh, that's why we can say that the themes of a uh, modernist poetry and modernist literature they are quite uh, universal or they can be at least cosmopolitan they have a cosmopolitan echo uh, in the uh, in their poetry in their whole literature then a lot of uh, modernist poets they used to write on the political problems of the time another thing is uh, most of the poets they used to write on psychological themes because these are the blessings of perhaps the marxist criticism and the psychoanalytic sides that the modernist poets are also inspired of the themes of politics and psychology some of the poets they particularly used to write uh, uh, with their subconscious with their subconscious conscious most of the intellectual poets like uh, t s eliot w b yeats astor pound they are also uh, interested in uh, greek myths and greek mythology and in their poetry we can find the vivid use of greek uh, uh, characters or mythological characters like in ts eliot's wasteland the narrator is tiresias who is basically uh, a, a greek character or a tiresias is actually the narrator of uh, the greek myth myth of the oedipus so he is also the narrator of the wasteland in w b yeats's poetry we can also find the use of uh, greek myths and the characters of greek mythology like uh, leda and so on uh, it is the poem again um, he, that that is written on uh, the seduction of uh, a girl by zeus zeus who is uh, actually the greek god of sun so modernist uh, have used uh, these features of greek mythology but they have their own way to use it uh, they did not use them uh, with their uh, conventional perspectives uh, like with the perspectives of uh, myths particularly rather they have uh, use them in their own way in a very unique and innovative way like in wasteland uh, tiresias is actually um, narrating the poem because uh, he is used the very character of tiresias uh, the narrator is used actually to show the the upheaval of the situations uh, since uh, the centuries and ages of uh, humanity so he is used to show that the decaying values of humanity since the ages and then uh, modernist poets they are highly interested in promoting the common man's issue issues in their poetry and uh, they do not only address the beauties of life they also address the ugliness of life as well and uh, they have a very clear frame to re represent not only the optimistic sides of life but also the pessimistic sides of life some of the prominent uh, modernist english poets are although they have a mini school of uh, uh, poets i mean the school of thoughts uh, the poets belong to many school of thoughts of poetry but uh, uh, some of the prominents i am going to mention over here first of all we we cannot proceed our discussion without considering gerard manley hopkins uh, who is basically a poet from the later victorian era and he is also from the school of pre raphaelite Uh, poets um, but uh, his influence on modernist poetry is uh, very high because he was published late and uh, he, his poetry was published uh, in after his death and uh, 
he used a specific type of uh, meter in his poetry that he had had uh, used in his poetry and that very thing uh, he had got from his predecessors and the very type of uh, meter uh, is, is the spring then we have the images like T. Hume as Repound and then T. S. Eliot. T. S. Eliot was also inspired of Symbolist as well as from the images. So um, all these three poets, they have used the imagism, the technique of imagism in their poetry a lot. Then we have some Irish poets like W. B. Gears and Shemasini in the modernist time period. Then we have Philip Larkins, uh, uh, Philip Larkin, but... Uh, all of these poets, they have just uh, communicated the themes of alienation, fragmentation and the decay of values and the effects of war in their poetry. But uh, we will have a separate session for each of the poets to discuss uh, uh, their themes in details. Uh, for today, uh, my focus was on the features of uh, modernist English poetry. Thank you so much for today. See you in the next video with some new topic. Allah Hafiz.